Hey everyone, welcome back to Alps Mustang Garage. Uh, we're picking up the 289 engine rebuild again as part of this series that we're doing. So today's uh, focus is um, we're going to be installing the timing chain cover and the water pump. And so that's what uh, today's video is going to be all about. All right, so if you haven't had a chance yet, um, go ahead and uh, click the subscribe button. It really does help our channel grow, which helps us to like produce more videos uh, to help you guys out. Um, and, and, and if you find the video helpful, hit the like button, because that also helps get that video out there for people that are trying to find us. So, um, okay. First thing that I like to do, as you can see, I already have like the timing cover and water pump on, but that's because I like to mock everything up. Um, just to kind of like make sure I have all the bolts in the right locations. Uh, Ford did a very wonderful job of making sure that every single bolt is like a different length and gets a different washer and all sorts of like fun stuff throughout the years. And they also love the chains things throughout the years as well. So like I like to mock everything up just to kind of make sure and then kind of keep track of where my bolts are going to go. So. Um, so that's why it's all mocked up, but now that I know where all my bolts go, we're going to take them off, keep them organized on the bench, and then prepare to install all this stuff. Got the timing cover all off, it's prepped, it's clean. Um, this is like a replacement aftermarket timing cover. Um, the originals, like it's really hard to find a nice clean original that's not all pitted back here. Um, so we're not building a concourse engine, so I do have a new timing cover for it. So we're gonna drive in a seal for it because obviously you wanna like put that in. And this particular seal, you can actually put this in like after you install it if you really wanted to. Um, either way, it doesn't really matter. The original type of seals would, would actually press in from the back side, but we're gonna use the new style of seal and we're gonna push it in through the front side here. So um, just have my seal driver kit, pretty standard basic, just kind of Make sure you're gonna go in nice and square. Okay, so there's a front crank shaft, front crank shaft seal installed. Okay, so one thing I kind of like to do, you know, especially if I'm using like aftermarket stuff, like, I mean, this timing cover is not a factory original OEM. Um, the water pump also is not a factory original OEM. We have a Edelbrock manif or Edelbrock water pump. And so what I like to do is kind of mock everything up. I, I had the water pump on here and I determined all the bolts for you know, the right lengths, and Ford really loves to kind of make a different bolt for every single position on their stuff. So I have it all mocked up now, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all this off, kind of lay it on the bench, so that way I kind of have it oriented correctly. So that way when I slap my gasket on and, and my water pump, everything should go nice and smooth. Okay, so I got my timing cover back off. Um, before I put the cover on, I do like to, kind of drip a little bit of oil on my chain and the fuel pump eccentric. Um, that way that's kind of pre-lube a little bit. I have all my bolts kind of oriented out here. I bought a new uh, water pump and timing cover bolt kit. Kind of comes with this handy little diagram. And so I just kind of have all my bolts kind of laid out where they're gonna go. That way it should make this process nice and smooth. So we'll just kind of drizzle a little bit of oil here on the chain. Get it on the eccentric. Okay, so now I'm gonna prep my gasket. Um, I like to put a nice little thin bead of silicone around and kind of lightly coat uh, both sides of this. And that way it'll ensure that we get a really good seal on there. Okay, so just kind of like a thin coat, front and back. Um, I say this a lot in, in the videos where I'm resealing gaskets, and that is your, your gasket is meant to seal 
but the silicone is meant for the imperfections. A lot of people don't like silicone, but um, if you want this old stuff to seal up, you kind of need that light little thin, thin coat of silicone. Um, I don't like redoing timing covers. So behind here, you can't really see. I got two little mounting bolts here and here. I'm gonna use these little bolts to get those started. So when I get this started, like I'm not tightening anything down. I'm just kind of, everything's just kind of finger tight for now. I want everything to be started before I start cinching everything down. And that includes the water pump because now I'm gonna get the water pump on. You know, I have bolts that are going through here that go through the water pump. They're gonna help get this timing cover seated on the block, you know, nice and evenly. So, so now we're gonna get the water pump on. So when you're getting ready to do this, um, you have a gasket that goes between the timing cover and the plate. And then you also have a gasket that goes between the plate and the water pump. And the plate actually bolts to the water pump. So you kind of have to like put this on the water pump first and then bolt the whole unit onto the timing cover. Okay, so with this Edelbrock like performance water pump, it's not like a standard gasket that you would get for a standard water pump. So we had to like order these um, directly from Edelbrock to get this. So we're just gonna do kind of the same deal that we do with the, uh, you know, any other gasket. I'm just gonna use this, uh, you know, water pump and thermostat housing uh, sealant though on this one. So. Okay, so we got our gasket all prepped. Get that on there nice, it'll stick on there. And then we can put our plate on. This has kind of got a recess, uh, definitely the you know pump side. So, and then it's got a couple of little bolts right here. And these ones we're going to tighten all the way down because you can't access them once you install the pump. Okay, and then we're just going to kind of spread it around. Okay, so the plate's on there now, and now you're going to put on this gasket. It's very specific. It has, you know, it goes around those two bolts like that and matches the timing cover. So now we're going to get this one good and prepped. Okay, so this gasket's all prepped now. Can get stuck on the plate. Okay, and I can grab these like two bottom bolts over here and just kind of throw them in. That way I got two bolts started and ready to go. Just keep grabbing bolts off my chart here because I got them all mapped out. I know exactly where they go. Kind of makes this process pretty slick. Okay, just like anything else I tighten down, I like to kind of just go around it really slow. I like to do things by hand. Just 
So just kind of little bits at a time here. And that way everything just kind of goes on nice and even. I'm not going to fully tighten one bolt and then go fully tighten the other bolt. And that's just not the proper way to do things at all. Once you've gone around several times and uh, everything seems to be kind of on even, you know, usually what will happen is like once you kind of make a around, like you know these bolts will kind of loosen up as you're kind of putting it on. Um, but once you've kind of gotten to that point, um, we're kind of ready for torquing. Now, in the book, the spec is like 20 to 25 foot pounds. It seems like a lot to me, so I'm going to start it out at 10 and kind of see how it feels. You're going to want to do this in stages anyways, even if you make it to 20 foot-pounds, which I think is a lot for these bolts. You don't want to go straight to 20. You want to do this in stages. So to torque these down, um, you need a little deal called a crow's foot here. You can get right in on this and get your torque wrench on that. So um, there's a certain degree of you need to like pay attention to what you're doing. Um, I'm, I just torque these to 10 and they feel like really tight. And the book says 20 to 25. I just don't think like making it to 20 is like realistic. So you kind of have to like pay attention and, and feel. That's why I like to do a lot of stuff by hand. Like you have to feel what you're doing because like it just comes a certain point where you're just going to keep tightening that bolt and it's just going to become loose. And that's just the reality of stuff. Like I don't care what the book says. Like if it's just not going to tighten anymore, like then that's where she's going to go. And more likely you're going to be just fine. So um, I might step this up a little bit more just to kind of see how it feels, maybe a 12, but um, I just don't like the idea of 20. So anyways, let's see what 12 feels like. Okay, so I went around this and I tried going to 12, but like the bolts that feel the most sketchy are like the really long ones that go all the way through the pump and into through the timing cover and into the block. Um, I'm gonna leave them at 10. Um, the shorter ones, like they feel like they can tighten up more, but like, at the end of the day, like with your gaskets and your silicone, I'm going to leave this at 10. It just feels way better. I don't like going to 20. There's just no way. So, but anyways, um, yeah, that's your timing cover. That's your water pump. We got the seal in there. Like it's good to go. Uh, the only other thing you may want to do is just kind of like rotate your engine over just to make sure your timing chain isn't rubbing on your cover and stuff like that. But um, other than that, um, that's that part of the engine build. So we appreciate you watching, appreciate you being here. Um, until uh, next time, um, we'll see you later.